Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about logging off work. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, as a software engineer, do you usually log off from work only after you've met the targets that you have set yourself for the day? Nope, I log off and uh, log on my work uh, on the agreed upon hours uh, pretty much all the time. It might be uh, an exception here and there if there's some very critical short term delivery that comes up but uh, that's only really when uh, I mean there have been situations like that when I've been uh, forced to sort of stay up uh, late and that's usually because of the incompetence of other people where they fail to tell me something or they promise something they shouldn't be promising or stuff like that and all of a sudden it's my my job to uh, to save them but it's very rare that uh, it's almost never the case where I have to do that for my own coding and that is because of this thing that nobody really really talks about I would suspect well it's not really something we can talk about openly but I'm gonna co throw caution to the wind and just tell it like it is. Uh, different programmers de need different amounts of time to finish a task because some programmers are better than other programmers at what they do. Boom. I know that comes as a shock to everybody but the thing is if you are working with code that is very very complicated you need to take your time to really understand it uh, or you I mean you always have the option of passing it over to somebody else but you mean let's say that you are the one who's supposed to fix it and it doesn't really matter how much time you try to force yourself to put into this thing because what really is important in that situation is that you comprehend what it is what, what's happening and there is a certain what I like to call fullness of what you can do under a certain time period uh, it's similar to, to exercise you can tell yourself that you're gonna run a marathon if you're fairly unfit but your your body is not gonna agree with you most likely it's gonna collapse sooner or later you're gonna hurt yourself and having this sort of idea that you're gonna push yourself to the limit there when, when you're dealing with something complicated that takes a longer longer time than than you think in some cases that doesn't even help because you're stuck and you can't actually progress any further you need help or you need some other perspective or you need some time to s just relax your mind or things like that because the reality of software development guys is that it everything is easy if you're really really good everything takes no time at all if you know exactly what you're doing but many times that's not the case for the average software developer you're truly included do you think I know every answer to everything of course not. I spend tons of time just looking things up and like trying to figure out, okay, wait a minute. I thought that this was working in this way and now I need to figure this thing out. Or right, I'm going to need to have to do some research, I have to shake around, etc, etc. And if I put the requirement on myself that I'm supposed to ship this thing, or I'm going to do like set what would like targets. My target is that I have a deadline to deliver this thing. And as I like to say, the problem is the pro what the problem is which basically means that I can only work as well as I can on this problem and either pray that I'm a better software developer or that someone's gonna come and help me and make the problem simpler or like so forth and so forth and extending that doesn't actually help like working overtime and things like that is very silly stupid managers so they have what they call crunch time I remember my coworkers talking about that, saying that, oh, we have crunch time now, and he was like, he was super stressed, he was super annoyed, and I kind of just looked at him and said, wait, 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 that's the thing that you're using, right, when you're not working smart, that's when you're working hard, right, and we sort of laughed about the whole thing, because that's another one of those cliche things, oh, we should work smarter, we should not work harder, and I like to tell my friends who are very good at throwing that around, but don't really seem to understand how to do that, that, yeah, it's really great to work smart if you're smart, uh, but the problem is that most people are not smart, therefore they only have the option of working harder, which is the why you do crunch time. 
why you do hack weeks, why you do all these do a dumb shit things that managers use because they want to churn out fast results and because that is at the end of the day what it is about. And they try to hide and cover the fact that that is what's happening by making a game of it or something similar. It's not unlike, it has a lot of the same elements as these sorts of, you know, pyramid schemes where you, um, you, uh, you you get reward or sales trophies and things like that. You're, you're trying to reward people for delivering faster than expected. But as I said before, the people who are able to deliver faster than expected are not doing so because they sit longer at the computer. They are doing so because they're better. That's why. That's why it's faster with some people, and some people are slower in software engineering. If you know, if you take a junior software developer, I don't care how talented that person is. It's very unlikely that that person is going to be able to deliver in the same sort of time with the same sort of quality levels as someone who's really senior and really knows their stuff. Who's done this a million times before. The reason why you might see that some seniors and some like it depends on like situation that some things takes about the same time is because either there's a very good balance or the senior level software developers they're simply not interested in overachieving, which of course is not the greatest thing in the world for the for the company. But I've always found this to be true, which is the thing that I try to balance when I run a team, and that is that if I know my team. I know when someone's dragging their feet and I know when someone is really putting it, putting the effort in and I try to observe under what circumstances they do one or the other if I see a trend that one of my seniors or one of my like the one of the guys who, or girls I work with who are usually pretty good and fast all of a sudden starts like slacking off and doesn't really have a good and uh, good reason for it I make sure that they are aware of that I am seeing that that is happening because I know where they are and then we talk about it if there's a benign reason then there is a benign reason if there's not a benign reason I tell them to shape up it's sort of like I just as being a coach I see that one person is running a little bit slower today because they seem to not care so much today that's okay I just blow my whistle and say step it up we need you to perform at the level that you are, uh, that where you are usually appro uh, where which is appropriate for you. But at the same time, I never get to a point where I try to stress people out and I push them and say, "Oh, we really need to sh do a sharp deadline type of thing here," because the planning of the work, like this, is has, is a symbiotic thing. If you push people to the point where they're always in a situation where they feel like they have no uh, no breathing room you're just stressing people out and the software is going to suffer because it's like forcing music or forcing art or forcing anything that is innovative. You can absolutely do it, but it's really something you should be very careful with doing because usually the best work is done by very talented people at, an, at a good pace for them. And that's why I tell people that if you have a slow performance software team, odds are that just making them work longer or making people feel like they have to work longer is actually not helping. It might actually have a much worse effect because the people who are really good usually meet their deadlines. It's very very rare that I find that a really good software developer has the need to work more hours than agreed upon because the, the, the reality is that they have the skills necessary to meet the expected deadline for all their stories and so forth. And these people are usually more valuable than you can possibly imagine on top of that because even if you can meet the, like, the, because the meeting the deadlines and um, being very good at that without hacking things together and so forth and working over time, it usually indicates that they're actually pretty smart, which is another very great thing, because, and this is the thing that I try to look at. If my software developers, I know that they could, in theory, probably push it even further and go, in and go faster, as long as they're not slacking off and, you know, misbehaving or something like that, I'm fine that they take a little bit longer on certain things and so forth, as long as I can see that correlate to either more boy scouting or that they show a bigger interest in something else that is positive towards the team. Because the lines of code that they churn out, I have already planned how much I need them to produce for a certain time period. So it's irrelevant if for me if they get there in the in half that time or this time that we agreed upon because we already planned for that. As long as they're not just sitting around 
wasting time. They And I can see very clearly, and this comes back to that you have to understand the work. Then they're actually providing a value and you don't have to force them to work overtime and make them feel like, you know, they're never good enough or that uh, they have to meet certain targets. Otherwise, you know, they, they're, they're going to have to go into crunch and so forth. Because the only time you do that is when you are an ignorant manager who does not know how to plan and compose a good team. That is the only time that this happens, uh, at least in my experience. So what I want you to take away from this is that no, I usually log very normal hours when I work and that's mostly because I know that I can meet all of my deadlines, I can meet all the expectations and so forth and in some cases I'm lucky and things go a little bit faster than I expected but for the most part we sort of are very good at estimating exactly how long something's going to take. And that comes because you spend years of work learning how to do the job and how to estimate and how to plan things. And usually I find that it's not actually a benefit for people to work longer hours. It's been proven many times that if you get tired, you get, you get less effective. And some software developers are actually more valuable if you give, if they just work six hours or like a short amount of time. And when they work with me, it's all about the output. What value am I getting from you? I don't care if you work eight hours, 10 hours or six hours. If you produce shit, then I can't have you in the team. If you produce like a crazy person that just like tons and tons of value that makes all the differences. If you create solutions that make everybody more effective or you always deliver on time and there's always tests, there's always stability. If I see the value in you, what you're doing, I don't care if you go and uh, you take an hour early or whatever when you st start to feel like you're a little bit drowsy because today you're low energy and stuff like that. Because it's, I, I mean, guys, I have trained people in martial arts for my most of my life. I know what uh, that some days you have higher energy levels and some days you have lower level energies, uh, energy. And the same thing goes for software. And only a stupid man manager doesn't see that and forces these crunch types and so forth. And as I've said before, usually in my opinion, when people do that sort of thing, it is because they have a systematic incompetency in their planning and estimations and uh, so forth and so forth. It's very rare that you see this repa repeating pattern of forcing people to work overtime and so forth from people who are competent in, um, in their role. It's mostly just some of the incompetent managers who like have these sh stressful uh, and responsive ways of working that forces that situation over and over. Have a great day.